Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to my inspirational content. We are here today for our 134th Bible Challenge. Today we are working on no, uh, Numbers, the 27th chapter already. The first 10 verses we're going to read together for those of y'all just joining in and may not know. And the rest of the chapter, I ask you all to go back and read on your own. Happy Sunday. I hope you all had a pleasant night last night. And I hope you're looking forward to worshiping with your families and uh, friends out there today. And even though we praise God seven days a week, we set aside Sunday to do it more corporately. Yeah, I should say more corporately, especially those churches that have not opened up throughout the week yet since the pandemic. Hey Amen. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm having ice water this morning. Please grab your Bibles, follow along with me because this Bible challenge is good for you and I. Amen. Um, then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Malah, Noah, and Haglah, and Milcah, and Terzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, Our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he has no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his powerful word one more time. Uh, for a Google summary now, it's that time. Let's go ahead and um, listen in and, and see uh, a better breakdown of this scripture, okay? Uh, this chapter begins with the daughters of Zelahad of the tribe of Joseph, who presented something women and sisters should be very grateful for today. They came to Moses and Eleazar, saying their dad died in the wilderness with no sons, and they are concerned why he had to have his name done away with because he had no sons. In short, they wanted a possession of the land or inheritance also. Moses brought it before God, who said, those five daughters of Zephelhad are correct. God agreed. Amen. God instituted the order of succession. If a man dies with, the, with no son, his possession is given to his daughters. If he has no children, it passes to his brothers. If he has no brothers, it moves to the next kinsman in his family circle. Amen. This is the judgment. God is preparing Moses to die after he gets a glimpse of the land by standing on a mountain of Abaran. Moses was kept from eat, from entering into the land. And that that portion, uh, this is the judgment concerning um, Moses, that's towards the end of this chapter. So when you go back and um, finish this chapter, because we only read the first 10 verses together, it will go into that portion of the chapter. Amen. And uh, let me see. Uh, 
And um, please like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notifications bell if you haven't hit it already. And uh, may God get the glory as always. Enjoy your Sunday. I am so happy to yet be here in the land of the living to do the work of God. Amen. And I am enjoying this journey. I am encouraged and I am enjoying the ride of this journey. A lot of times God lead us to do things and we expect for things to just go a little bit faster. But you know what? Sometimes we need to just sit back, put those seat belts on and just cruise. Just cruise. Enjoy the journey. And that's what I'm doing with anything. Anything. I'm telling you, even something as uh, my marriage, I'm enjoying the journey. Uh, we all enjoyed the journey of uh, those of us who are parents. When our newborn babies was keeping us up at night and, and we were new parents, it seemed like it was rocky. It seemed like we had some disappointing days because we expected, oh, we got this newborn baby. Everything's going to be peaches and cream. But it was a journey. It was a process. We had to get to know our babies. Our babies had to um, get even comfortable with the new world being outside of the womb. And it was a process for the mother, the father, and the baby. Amen. So that's what we have to do with anything we choose in life. The journey with the Lord. Especially if you are a new person that comes into the body of Christ, you cannot watch what other people are doing to the extent where you get anxious and discouraged and wonder what can you do to be where they are. It's a journey. It's a process. It's personal. You have to get to know God, the journey, the process on your own. And I thank God for that revelation personally to myself. And somebody needed to hear that. Uh, sometimes when God give me things after the lesson, um, it's to benefit somebody. Because like I said, I was getting ready to just, you know, end the video. But the Lord wanted somebody to hear that. So please take it, receive it, and enjoy the journey, whatever journey God has you on today. Amen. God bless.